Now, with them in a hotel room in London, John Bon Jovi, the vocalist, backed by drummer Tico Torres and keyboard player David Bryan, it is as if it never left. It was the force that propelled his band Bon Jovi from New Jersey taverns to stadiums all over the world. When you are trying to explain how a garbage bag full of cash that was supposed to be given to Tony Soprano got up in the trunk of your car, it can feel like you are in the back room of a bar because of the luxurious surroundings. Thank you, good night, The Bon Jovi Story is a four-part documentary that will be released on Disney+. Plus. The documentary will trace the band's remarkable rise from, as Brian puts it, to the very top, as well as the many challenges they have encountered along the way. These challenges range from the manager being arrested for smuggling 20 tons of marijuana into the United States to the lead singer's well-publicized struggle to recover from vocal cord surgery. A significant portion of the documentary is devoted to the questioning of him over his choice to transition from having long hair to having short hair. Throughout it, he appears to be getting more and more exasperated. Regarding his friendship with Prince Harry, John has an equally profound one for him to consider. Bon Jovi was on par with the late Princess Diana in terms of fame for a period of time throughout the 1980s. In the series, John asserts that he does not have a messiah complex, which gives the impression that he has been accused of having such a disposition. The acclaim is something that these journeymen, who I know, live for. In my experience, adoration has never been a drug. His marriage to Dorothea Hurley, the girl he had a crush on in high school, began in 1989. The singer is known for leading a clean lifestyle. According to drummer Tico Torres, the rest of the band embraced the rock and roll lifestyle, which included their use of drugs and sex, as the series demonstrates. When it comes to the original bassist Alec John Such, who was fired from the band in 1994, and guitarist Richie Sambora, who left the band in 2013. After spending multiple stays in rehabilitation, how thin is the line that separates hedonism from excess becoming a problem, Brian recalls, John had a great time, but there was a point when I realized I needed to ease off on the gas pedal. The band Bon Jovi is quoted as saying, it's still a job, you got to show up for work. The departure of Sambora came as a complete surprise. A question is posed to Bon Jovi in the series, asking him when he first recognized that this is permanent. In response, he says that John has not yet realized this. Do you think that indicates there is a door that is open? As he puts it, he wants to make things plain. There was never that much of a fight. In no way did there ever exist any hostility. We are currently in the middle of the tour in 2013, and there was a show that took place on that particular night. On top of that, he did not appear. Also, you should know that we have been through this situation quite a few times with regard to substance misuse and rehabilitation and other related matters. After that, you did not show up the following evening. In other words, there was never any conflict. And yet, as you well know, the show must go on. According to Torres, who regards Sam Borer as the sweetest guy in the world, we've always said that being in the band is not a life sentence and we continue to say that. What kind of significance did it have for Sam Borer to express his regret to the audience in the movie for the way the movie ended? Bon Jovi claims that it was a very moving moment because it was the first time that he had done that in public. It is possible that the outcome of Bon Jovi's voice will determine whether or not they have the opportunity to build that bridge. In the event that he is unable to return to the level of performance that he expects of himself, he has made it abundantly plain that he would stop playing live. Although it is possible that Bob Dylan's voice has never been able to achieve the vocal pyrotechnics that Bon Jovi is capable of, I am speculating that he has continued to perform with a voice that is not quite what it was. Could he perhaps be willing to accept a certain degree of fallibility? Have we arrived at the point where the rock gods are in their last moments moments? As Brian puts it, I believe that the world is always cyclical. Rock and roll appears to be a genre that will endure forever, despite the fact that one door closes and another opens. 
You should know that even if you have everything you want on all of the social media platforms, you still need to physically get out there and sell your products door to door, you have to play. When I mention Abbas Show Voyage, I say, yeah, according to Bon Jovi, we are now in a conversation. That he is so enthusiastic about it gives the impression that this is not the first time that he has considered it. According to him, that is what keeps the music alive. It is inevitable that the music will survive the artist to some extent. On the other hand, I believe that it is intriguing to be able to see it and that it has a visual component. Brian points out that it has other benefits, and one of them is that I would love to sleep while the other person is working.